Good morning and welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. I'm putting together vice squad kits and since it's so close to Halloween I thought I'd tie a black ghost. A uh, venerable old featherwing streamer. You'll see here I got a second version. Uh, the marabou wing has become very popular as well so we're going to prepare you to tie either or both of these patterns. This is a kind of a classic streamer and we're tying it on a modern 4X long hook. The, if you want to tie a classic looking one, we should get you some 7X hooks, but I don't have enough of those to go around, so we're going to tie it on a standard hook. My theory is if you're going to count on the fish ignoring the hook anyway, it shouldn't matter what hook you use. Now, I'm going to start with black thread and about an eye length behind the eye. And that's going to remind me where I need to stop my materials to leave enough room to tie in the wing and the beard hackle and then still shape a head and even everything up. Now I'm going to go from front to back and you'll see I'm leaving little gaps. We've got a wool yarn for a body so this doesn't have to be neat. You don't need to twist your thread flat or anything. Just move it back to above the barb. For tailing material, I've got a just a yellow feather, and I want something with some web in it. You can see the web down here at the bottom end. Uh, a hand hackle would be probably a little more economical, a lot easier to use. This one's a, a Cock De Leon Rooster whiting product. And I've just trimmed some off. If they're not even, you can just take your thumbnail and just lightly tap on the back and that will help even them up. Keep that on the top of the hook and now move my thread back to the front. I'm moving it to the front because my body material is a, a yarn. It's a wool yarn and three plies and for this size I'm just going to use one so separate those things out until you got one strand. I'm tying it in the length of the shank so even with the yarn you want the spotty to be fairly even so that your tinsel rib is easy to apply. Now for tinsel I've got a Wapsie Mylar tinsel. This is a medium size. It's gold on one side, silver on the other. And what I'm going to do is apply the gold against the hook. There I got a little tag in that I'm going to tie down. and come back to, to the front for the last time. Yeah, this is real simple. You can dub this if you want to do it the hard way, but I found this wool yarn that's just perfect. There we go. And I'm going to respect my index point here and tie this off, still leaving some bare hook. Now when I wrap the tinsel, I'm going to fold it so that the silver is on the outside. That was the gold. So let's come the other way. I'll spread these wide open. Now I can see the tinsel on my side but not on your side so this is a good time to check and make sure you don't have a really big gap of black there. And continue to the front. And whatever angle this is when you get to the front, just hold the 
tinsel tight and get a couple of turns on it. Okay, now for the feather wing, I've got some Chinese, some strung Chinese hackle, and you want to get a couple that are flat. Now that's got some curve to it, but in this direction the stem is pretty straight. If you get these off of a neck, it's, it's much, much easier. Now I'm going to face those curved sides in. And get those tips even. Just slide my fingers back and forth until the tips are the same length. Now if this gets kind of unruly, what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of wax on my finger. Just a tiny amount. Not a sticky wax. There, that's going to hold those in shape. And set this up so that it extends a little bit behind the yellow. ones out. And do your best to hold this so that it stands up in line with the hook shank. Now we want to put that yellow beard on it. Go back to your same yellow hackle and get some nice and even, pinch them tight, and pull the stem away from the feathers, from the barbs. Now if you got a rotary vise, turn it upside down. If you don't, you're going to have to put the hook in your vise upside down. And measure that so that it's shorter in the point of the hook. I'm going to switch hands and you can tie this in and then trim the butt sections if you're feeling dexterous you can trim first and tie that in. Now you see the little gap where the yellow is forward of the feather. I'm just going to come back until those are even. And now shape the head. And do your final shaping with your whip finisher. And to make this nice and neat, you put some varnish on the front. I've got some loon thin finish that's easy to use, and I won't have to wait so long for it to dry. And then when you get the right volume, that stuff will kind of self level. And hit it with the lamp. There you go. There's the feather wing version. And if you want to do it with the marabou, very simple. get you uh, find a marabou feather with fairly long and straight wispy fibers with no stiff stem in the middle and to prepare it what I'm going to do is 
grab the stem and stroke everything forward and when I get them even I'll come down to the bottom and coax against the grain and anything that comes out is because it was too short and that will leave me a fluffy wing measure that just like you did the white feathers so that it expands, extends behind the yellow tail a little bit and bind that down. Now I don't want to make too many wraps here to shape the head because I've still got to tie in that yellow beard. Back to my yellow feather. thumbnail stacking now Marabou's got a lot of action this is probably the easier of the two versions to tie oops let's shorten that up Easier the two versions to tie and probably has a little more motion in the water, but it's neat to be able to tie it with the feather wing. So my fingers and stroke that back so it stays out of the way. By now I got a little better feel for how fast the goop comes out so I can let it level itself. There you go. Black ghost and a marabou black ghost. Have fun. Happy Halloween.